In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Together we praise God as we say, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever, amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. But do you gird your loins, stand up, and tell them all that I command you? Be not crushed on their account, as though I would leave you crushed before them. For it is I this day who have made you a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass against the whole land, against Judah's kings and princes, against its priests and people. They will fight against you, but not prevail over you, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will sing of your salvation, I will sing of your salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. I will sing of your salvation. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. O my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. I will sing of your salvation. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb, you are my strength. I will sing of your salvation. My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day your salvation. O God, you have taught me from my youth. Until the present, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will sing of your salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury. 
It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will be brought to nothing. If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. At present, we see indistinctly as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially, then I shall know fully, as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remain, these three, but the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to speaking in the synagogue, saying, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself, and say, Do here in your native place the things that were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, No prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their own town had been built, to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's been said that not getting what you want can sometimes be an incredible stroke of luck. And this philosophy embraces every aspect of human life. The fundamental difference between successful people and individuals who merely get by is often dictated by their inclination to work through disappointments and failures. Thomas Edison was dismissed from his first job as a telegraph operator after spilling sulfuric acid on top of the desk of his boss. And as an inventor, Edison struggled for years to develop and polish an actual working incandescent light bulb. He was also known for his persistence and his ability to move forward in the face of numerous and serious setbacks. Once, when asked about his failed attempts to create a storage battery, he shrugged off the question, saying, I haven't failed. I've merely found 10,000 ways that it won't work. Sir James Dyson is famed for his bagless cyclone vacuum, which revolutionized the industry a few years ago. He built 5,100 prototypes before finally building a model that worked. He said that he learned that the moment you want to slow down is the moment that you should accelerate. In long distance running, you go through a pain barrier. And actually, he said, if you persevere a bit longer, you'll start to climb out of it. Walt Disney opened the door to some of the greatest fun and imagination on earth, but he was fired as by the editor of the Kansas City Star, who said that Disney lacked imagination and had no good ideas. Charles Schultz, 
the man behind Charlie Brown and all the Peanuts characters, was turned away by Walt Disney, who said Schultz's work was not good enough. Schultz had been rejected many times before that. Even his high school yearbook editor discarded each and every sketch that he submitted. And yet all the characters he created have brought laughter and joy to many, many generations. And finally, let us look at Jesus Christ himself. Even many non-Christian historians regard him as the greatest person who ever lived. And yet not only the people of his home, hometown rejected him, as we see in today's gospel passage, but also the religious leaders of his time. And the point is clear. If any of these people, even Jesus, had let rejection govern their lives and keep them from doing what they thought was right, our world would be incredibly impoverished today, certainly with Jesus having the most profound impact. Jesus warned us against letting rejection by others keep us from doing what we think is right. He said, if the world hates you, realize that it hated me first. No slave, he said, is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. And Jesus was making an important point. Anyone who hopes to build a better world must be prepared for rejection. And almost everyone hearing my words today has experienced the kind of rejection that Jesus is talking about. As followers of Jesus, we can't let rejection and persecution keep us from being what God has called us to be, to stand up for what is true and right and just, and to serve the needs of the poor, the oppressed, and the sick. Remember the words of Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount, your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. Our vocation, our call as Christians is to be prophets of God our Father in our world, just as Jesus was a prophet of his Father in this world. This is what our baptismal call and confirmation promise is all about. To paraphrase St. Paul, in a world of darkness, we Christians are called by God to shine like stars. And together we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As a people of faith, trusting in God's mercy and goodness, we now turn to him with these, our prayers of petition. For the church throughout the world, that we may be guided by the example of love and care given us by Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of the church, that they may guide us with love, mercy, and compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer, that we may experience the joy of God's love and that we may share that love in all that we say and do, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died and gone before us in the faith of Christ, that they may enjoy the peace of God's kingdom. In a special way today, we pray for Pedro Paras, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those confined to their homes, nursing facilities, or hospitals, for those who care for them, and for all those intentions we now offer from the silence of our hearts. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious Father, we thank you for your many gifts. We ask you to hear these prayers and to answer them according to your holy will, for we offer them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, his death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end, we acclaim, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. And join me as together we pray our prayer for the year of the Eucharist. Jesus, I believe that you are truly present, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. In you I place my whole family, Heal our wounds and renew us in heart and mind with a greater reverence, devotion, and love for you in the Holy Eucharist. Our Lady, first tabernacle of the Word made flesh, intercede on our behalf to your Son, especially for the Diocese of Springfield and our priests. Through their love for the priesthood and the Eucharist, may they inspire young men to the priesthood that the Mass may continue to be offered so that we may be nourished with your Son's body and blood. Guide especially our youth to your Church so they may thrive by knowing the truth that comes only from Jesus. 
Most Holy Trinity, I adore you. My God, I love you in the most blessed sacrament. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.